God's assistance made available by competent counselors. In this case, you're the counselors, which means you need to know some certain dynamics and elements and principles of guidance through guidance. So an individual, so your children of any age, to help him direct his own point of view. So rather than imposing our own point of view, we should uh, provide them all necessary information and we should let them point of view and make his own decisions, carry his own. This is actually true definition of guidance. So we should support them uh, socially, psychologically, technically, in, from educational point of view, and we should trust them that right decisions. Maybe it takes several mistakes to find the right, right decision, decisions, but anyway, we should give them this opportunity because if we don't do this, they will not develop a right sense of individualism. They cannot develop their own understanding of orientation to life. They will just copy other people. So we shouldn't really, so they will make up their own minds. They will decide the cost of life. So they will decide actually which direction they should follow. This is definition of guidance in, in short. And when we do that, and we do that, there are some uh, actually, uh, let's say, a uh, principle for why do we need uh, guidance? It's also important to understand that because nothing's changing family. So, I mean, in the, in the past, we had big family, have self small families. Even as people were very much culture oriented and they were maybe conservative, but today, in today's families, each member of the family made, made up something, something different. So the values are changing in, in families, so cities. Everything is changing, including cities as well. Our villages are changing, towns are changing, cities, infrastructures changing, and, 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 and conflicts in values, attitudes, and morals. Since now we are living in the age of ICT, IT, internet, social media, our children have access to all kinds of different values, lifestyles, life orientations. So they see this kind of conflict among all these different types of lifestyles, for, for example, or life orientation. So that's why they need our guidance to some extent. And there are economic pressure and demands on school. Oh my goodness, I have four children and I have several years of my studying to pass examination. There was a huge pressure on them, a huge pressure, believe me. But I never remember myself imposing them, you should work hard, and uh, play, and etc. Um, I mean, this is a huge pressure that comes from educational requirements. And we should be, that's why we should provide guidance to our children children uh, because of young people, especially at this age. Now they are right after puberty, lots of problems in terms of finding the IT, for example. So, and then while they are facing lots of different kinds of problems, of course, our assistance. But side on the behalf, we shouldn't impose, our, but we just will be next to them assisting them, supporting them, so they will make up on decision, direction they should go. I think that's why we need guidance. Am I speaking too fast? It's okay, do you understand me clearly? I turn it down it's a bit. okay. <laughs> okay, should I slow down? It's okay. It's okay. I think it's fine. It's fine, we it's understand fine. you, yeah. All right. Okay, there are some important principles Principle we really make huge difference. So we don't have to make lots of mistakes to shed a light when we are doing guidance to our children. First of all, consideration the dignity of the individual is they have no right to school. They might be our children reprimand them. All right. So it's important. I have my son at the age of now eight. eight. I mean cause anything on him. So we uh, sit together, we discuss ideas together. If he wants to do something which is not appropriate to me, I try to uh, make him understand some 
disadvantages of that particular action, discuss it together and we decide it together, actually. So he is just eight years old because he needs to understand the dream. Here, always reprimand your child. If you always interrupt, if you always put your child, if you always put the blame on your child, they cannot develop the sense of self-esteem. It's important for them to feel the sense of self-esteem. So it's important to always take into consideration their dignity. Each individual is different from every other individual. That's why they are beautiful. So our children don't have to be, don't have to be uh, like somebody else's children. No, not at all. So our children are unique. So my child is unique in a positive way. I don't want him to, let's say, grow as a unique understanding of the world and world is put together. So my child sometimes uh, difficult as parents. Our children can make right. That's why we say, don't do this, but do that. Don't well, actually follow this, but follow this, this one, etc. Sometimes we are too uh, imposing our own children. But we should believe the ability, innate ability in our, that they can make. So, so I think we understand that our child is unique, different from all other children. So do not, do not force them to be someone else's children. Be like this, be like that are very detrimental to their development. So let's not do that. Let's admit that they have dignity no matter how old they are. So we should respect that. We should respect our children's individuality, their differences altogether. And then have innate ability to make right choices. Also, we should believe in this. It's important. The last one is they need continuous guidance. So not only guidance during examination periods or not only guidance for some important periods of their life, but guidance continuous guidance is needed for them to make right choices, but as, as by assisting them, not deciding on their behalf. So having said that, I have, I have a very important table here. So there are different kinds of guidance, parenting. So here you can see four different kinds of parenting. Each of them has their own distinct features distinct elements. And I think understanding these four different types of guidance and parenting will cast a huge light into the understanding of how we should behave while we are guiding our children. So the first one is authoritarian. Second one is authoritative. The third one is permissive. And the last one is uninvolved. I think some, some parents must uh, mute the, the voices. Dear microphone, parents will have a chance to ask and, and we can actually make it a dialogue.